All right. Do we have confirmation today that we're out there? I am looking right now. Not yet. Not yet. Don't know what's up with that. There it is. You got it? Mm -hmm. All right, very good. I'm gonna hit the, hit the record button as well before I turn it over to you, just in case just in case that stream goes down. So, all right, we are live, we are out there. I want to welcome everyone in to Unity Prosperity Ocean International and our Sunday morning message going out every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Central Time. So we wanna welcome you in, whether you're behind the curtain, so to speak, here live on our, our Zoom feed, whether you're looking in on Facebook Live or whether you're looking in on our YouTube channel anytime during the week, or whether you're one of the two dozen ministries that are using this for your Sunday messages. Welcome in. We are so happy that you are here and joining in and taking part in this spiritual nourishment with all of us. Welcome. We want to get it going today, this ninth day of July, by turning it over to Minister Tanay Kazmina, who is okay. going to get us going with our daily word. Take it away, Tanay. Good morning, everybody. Today's Daily Word, Sunday, July 9th, 2023, is power. I look within and discover my power. Great power lies within me. Like a treasure chest full of gold and precious jewels buried in my own backyard. It is so close that I sometimes overlook it leading me to search near and far, seeking strength and value outside of myself. Yet my power is in my potential, a gift for me to discover. I am endowed with wisdom, love, and creativity, gemstones meant to be uncovered and shared with the world. I am rich in my capacity to use these gifts to reach goals and create my life with intention intentionality. As I think, speak, and behave in accordance with my divine abilities, I share my treasures. I bring into the light the hidden parts of myself, knowing my power comes from expressing my best self. And from the scripture Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, it reads, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. May this reading be a blessing to the hearers and readers of this word for the elevation of their soul and the edification of their mind. Amen. Amen, and thank you so much for that. You know, I feel like I wrote this about me. <laughs> well... You know, it's a great piece. We are looking for, hey, do we want to open with the daily word that's showing up for today? Or do we want to go to something else that's in alignment with today's message? And and after looking through some other material, we read that one and said, oh, well, we love synchronicity because this is perfectly aligned with today's message. So, so we're going to take a dive right in. We're going to start a new mini series today. You know, you often you can look at the bookshelf behind me or look at your own bookshelf or the stack of books that's perhaps on your nightstand. And we often, I think we all have that. Yeah, I'm going to get to that one. Or in my case, I got to finish that one over there. I, oh boy, I meant to bring them in here. I have it on the nightstand. But um, I'm, I'm going through, besides diving into the ones we're going to be talking about the next few weeks, I have uh, Brian Proctor, Bob Proctor's son, just released his book, which is half, you know, personal and professional development and, and really an autobiography, really, about his life as 
as Bob Proctor's son. And, and it's, you know, knowing them both personally and Brian and his wife, Corey, it's, uh, it brings a few tears to our eyes, but also some just gems of wisdom in there. But we're diving into these too. So we have a, a closer look and a magnifying some of the messages in these books that uh, we're looking at over the next couple of weeks. So today is, well, I'll hold that up in a minute. Thank you, Tanae. She just brought me the, the book. Um, so this message today is, what does it mean to live big? And, you know, again, summer is the ideal reading, you know, the time to, to pull out the favorite reading material and explore some books that maybe have been on that nightstand or on that must read list for a while that we maybe even haven't opened yet, you know, so diving into those pile of books, I, I you know, I always have quite a few in the stack there and I, I go through them slow because I've always, since, you know, over 10 years ago, when I went to back to school, I, uh, I've, I've gone through slowly, not reading a book just to read and get through, but to study page by page. So I always have a stack of books like that. And I decided to, again, to dive into them. And that way, I'm making them into a Sunday message is kind of forces me to read them, right? So the first one we're going to look at, and I know you're, some of you have shared that you're very fond of this offer. The first one is by Pam Grout, and it's titled Living Big. Actually, I love the full title because just the full title really gets me motivated and inspired. I, I love this. Feel the energy into this title, Living Big. Embrace your passion and leap into an extraordinary life. All words I love to use. Passion, leap. You hear me talk about quantum leaps all the time. Extraordinary, infinitely spectacular. So this is great. And she's talking about having an intoxicating vision for your life beyond just dreaming big. The other one's by Gabby Bernstein, Gabrielle Bernstein, and it is The Universe Has Your Back, Transform Fear to Faith. So those are the full names. If you want to grab them, I think you can get them for either zero or pennies on uh, on Kindle. Um, and you might want to pick those up or just come here for a summary. Living big, embrace your passion and leap into an extraordinary life. And the universe has your back. So that's what that'll be. It's going to be Pam Grout for the first two weeks. So today and next week is is living big. So our question of the morning is, what does it mean to live big? What does it mean to to live big? And this is a topic we explore a lot, especially when you come through and you're listening to this uh, through the alternative unity ministry unity prosperity ocean Inter international although we talk about all the things under the unity umbrella the ministry purpose is whole life prosperity the message of whole life prosperity and we're not just talking dollars and cents of course we're talking health and physical fitness and healing and relationships and time and money freedom and all those things that fit under that umbrella of whole life prosperity. So this is right in alignment with all that. So I want you just to start considering, even though we explore this a lot and, and using different words, perhaps, um, what does it really mean to, to live big? Because I believe that's what we came here to do. We came here to live big, meaning to express the divine that we're all made of in the highest ways we possibly can. Ernest Holmes in the Science of Mind Big Book said, God is more completely expressed through the one who lives largely than the one who lives meagerly. Think about that. Because most people don't do that. Rather as Henry David Thoreau wrote in Walden, he said, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. Pam Grout's book begins with a great quote, a great, a great quote from Bob Savino, which says, every day you are signaled and summoned to embark on a journey beyond the boundaries of all you have ever known. Every day you are signaled 
and summoned to embark on a journey beyond the boundaries of all you have ever known. Living big then is, is going beyond the boundaries of what we currently know, going beyond our comfort zone, moving to the edge first, then finally walking across that edge. But again, most people don't do that. According to poet Rainier Maria, Maria, Rainier Maria Rilke, she said, most people come to know only one corner of their room, one narrow strip on which they keep walking back and forth. Living big is about discovering the rest of the room. Now, you most likely have heard me quote the statistic that the average person has about 60,000 thoughts a day. I usually say 40 to 60,000, but for today, let's just use 60,000 60, thoughts a day. But you might not know this. Approximately 98% of those 60,000 thoughts or 58,800 are the same ones we had yesterday. That's a lot. That's a lot of the same thinking over and over and over again. And sometimes it's stinking thinking, isn't it? Uh, to use borrow some words from Zig Ziglar. Now, because we adhere to a belief system called new thought, perhaps we only recycle, say, 95% of our old thoughts. But that's still 57,000 old thoughts a day. That's a lot. <laughs> Just think what we what we could do with our lives if if we even used half of our daily amount of thoughts thinking up new ideas, solutions to challenges. Maybe affirmative words that are in, in alignment with the life we would love to live ways in which we can create greater connections with the God of our being, with one another, how to be of greater service to the world, how to share our gifts to answer life's challenges. And, and, and there's so much information in those last two lines. We were talking about the subconscious and other speakers in that. You know, I did my, my doctoral dissertation on the power of our subconscious mind and and this is the way that we change and replace some of the programming that's in there this is the way we we start to think in a new and different way to have a new thought within us pam grout writes on page two of her book she says we live at half throttle we suit up for hopscotch when we could be performing miracles we're completely oblivious to our own majesty, to the fact that the very heartbeat of the divine thrums through our veins. Living big is about tapping into the unused resources of our minds, loving with every ounce of our souls, and stepping up to claim our wildest dreams. I love that line. That's why you heard it here. She goes on to write on page four, Pam says, it is my highest hope that this book will make some kind of impact on the world's consciousness. If we stay in the restrictive ruts we're in now, we will never solve the world's problems. And there are a lot of problems that need solving, a lot of big things that need doing. We have kids taking guns to school. We have mass destruction of our rainforests. We have neighbors so lonely that Jay Leno is their only friend. So I have to ask, what are we going to do about it? No longer can we sit back, finger our remotes and say, tut, tut, what a shame. We must act. We must grow out of our wimpy, apathetic, small lives and take action. As long as there is prejudice, environmental destruction, people calling each other names, there is something big to do. 
We don't have the right or the luxury to be small. The answer to your problems and the world's problems are one and the same, and that answer is you, us, now, end quote. And you know, I want to pause right there for a second, because maybe this maybe this title will get Pam's attention. Pam Grout and I are, are friends on Facebook, and I don't know how active she is, but Pam, if you notice the title and hear, hear this message, um, hey, reach out. You're welcome to come and join us and, and say a few words. That would be great. So many people in this group uh, love your work. All right, so for the next two weeks, we are going to look at the attitudes it takes to live big. Today, we're going to look at three, three things. Think big. Thinking big, which is the attitude of boldness, right? The attitude of boldness. It's another one of my favorite words that, that bold, boldness talked about in that quote by W.H. Uh, Murray that I always, always quote. Number two, imagine big, the attitude of creativity. The attitude of creativity. Number three, playing big, the attitude of happiness. So we're going to talk about these three dimensions of attitude, then next week, that's today, the next week we will bless big, give big, and love big. All right, number one, think big, the attitude of boldness. I'm just looking in, and we got quite a few people looking in at, on Facebook. Welcome in, those of you that have just joined us. Thinking big, the attitude of boldness. And one of the first the first themes in the stage abd adaptation of it was Robert Fulgham's, uh, all, all I Need to Know, I Learned in Kindergarten. In one of the first scenes, it went like this. The kindergarten teacher, listen into this. The kindergarten teacher asked her fresh young students, how many of them are dancers? I am, I am. They all sh shouted exuberantly, right? Everybody's a dancer, right? Now, this again, she's asking her kindergarten students this. And then she says, how many of you are singers? She continued. Again, all of them wave their hands wildly. Painters. Again, unanimous hand waving. I am, I am, I am. Writers. More of the same. I'm a writer, yeah. <laughs> now, in fourth grade, remember, those were kindergartens. In fourth grade, another teacher ask the same question of the same students. Now, only a third of them are dancers, singers, painters, and writers. By high school, the number of students willing to claim their artistic talents is down to a paltry few. Where did all their boldness and passion go? Where did it go? Somewhere along the line, for many of us, the boldness and passion went away. Perhaps we feel it was taken away. Perhaps it was subtle erosion. It's gone. But what if today were the day for you to reignite that spark of boldness and passion in you for for who you really are. What if today you challenge the status quo of your life? Being bold is simply a matter of claiming or reclaiming your inheritance. It is simply an acknowledgement of who you are, what you are. Pam Grout on page 30 says, when we refuse to be bold, when we forget to say, I count, we might as well hand in our keys. Without boldness, life is a little, is, is little but rote recitation. Life is little but rote recitation. And we've heard it, right? All the time. Affirm with me three times. I recently watched a, a service where uh, somebody do dozed off before the third repetition of the affirmation. We have to be bold. Here's an example of boldness. 
when Walt Disney was in grade school, a well-meaning teacher peering over at the flowers he was scribbling in the margins of his paper, tapped him on the shoulder, tapped Walt Disney on the shoulder and said, Walt, honey, those flowers are nice, but flowers don't have faces on them. Walt turned around, looked her straight in the eye and pronounced boldly, mine do, <laughs> mine do. So today is the day to think and to be bold. Today is a day to have a new thought about who you are. Not one of the 57,000 or 55,000 recycled thoughts. I invite you to consider a new one, a big one, a bold one. And in a little bit, I'm going to ask you to do just that today. All right, let's move on to the second attitude we're talking about. Imagining big, the attitude of creativity. When you have that big thought about yourself, it is time to imagine big or to have the attitude of creativity. Again, back to Pam, Pam Grout, page 115. She says, usually when we aspire to be spiritual, we think of things like being kinder, being more understanding, saying more prayers. But in order to fulfill our destiny as spiritual beings, we must also become more creative, more open to magic, the deep vistas that gush through our souls. End quote. We can also squash our creativity, can't we? Just like our boldness by buying into and believing in misinformation and our own assumptions. We buy into those and we believe in them. We really need to, this is something Tanae and I teach. We, we, we have to examine those beliefs. Where did they come from? What, is, is there any foundation there? Is it based on absolute truth? We have to examine those from time to time and see what we bought into. Here's a little childhood story um, that I pulled out. I may have shared this a long, long time ago. And it's it's from a minister friend of mine, but I just love it. I, I love using it. And, and I'm using it with her permission. She says uh, this false information doesn't take up residence in her anymore, but for many, many years it did. So, and I can relate. And, and maybe you can too. Maybe you can relate to it, a story that you came to believe in, bought into it, and now it's part of your paradigm. She says, and these are her words, she said, let me introduce you to this piece of false information by telling you how it came to live in me. For the first three years of my life, I was an only child. And then a sister came along. Being three years ahead of her, I obviously did things first. I don't know at what age I first picked up a crayon and started to draw, but whenever it was, I did it and really loved it. Then my little sister grew old enough to want to do what her big sister was doing. So she plopped her chubby little self down beside me, put a crayon in her fat little hand and began to draw. These are her words. That was the beginning of the end. It was in that moment that my misinformation began to form. Because the fact was my sister, three years younger than I, could draw circles around me while I was drawing little stick figures with hair and eyelashes and perhaps a pair of pants or a skirt. She was drawing proportionately accurate, intricate tea parties, even at that young age. I could see the difference between my stick figures and her tea parties. And from the observation of that fact, I drew a conclusion. Mind you, no one told me this. I told it to myself. So our misinformation does not necessarily come because other people told us. Sometimes we tell ourselves misinformation based 
on our observation and interpretation of events. So here's what happened. Again, these are in the words of my minister friend. I accurately concluded that my sister could draw better than I could. That was an observable fact, no getting around that. But here comes the misinterpretation of the fact. I concluded that my sister was an artist and I was not. I concluded that my sister was creative and I was not. End of story. Belief locked in. It became who I was, or more accurately, who I was not. My sister grew up to become a very good commercial artist, and I grew up thinking, no, not just thinking, I grew up knowing and living from the knowing that I was not creative. But you know what? That knowing was absolutely, totally, and completely incorrect. I believed my own misinformation. And if you think, believe, and or know you are not creative because you have compared yourself with someone who has a specific creative gift, then you have believed some misinformation as well. Oh, okay. End of, of her story and her words. But I mean, I can relate to that, can't you? I mean, we just, we take something, we, we apprehend it, we believe in it, we wrap it, and we base so much on it. And it just, you know, it, it grows. In this thing called you, a little book by Ernest Holmes, this thing called you, Ernest Holmes writes, you exist that divine feeling, fire, imagination, and creativity may be expressed through you. The spirit comes to you with a new and fresh creativity. You need not ask what others have done or how they have done it. Be yourself and express life as you find it. Never imitate. Trust the self. Find the self in God and God in the self. The spiritual truth I want you to walk away with today is this. You are naturally creative in your own right and in a variety of ways, not just one. We are all gifted artists, each and every one of us. I've heard it said that the artist is not a different kind of person, but every person is a different kind of artist. I want you to know this concept is as much for those of you who consider yourselves creative as for those who don't. Often, I've seen those who are creative in one area, even very creative, lack a belief in their ability to be creative in other areas of their lives. Or I've seen them completely block the creativity because they think they aren't creative or good enough. That's a big one, I'm just not good enough. Every day you can bring into your experience, imagination, originality, and potential. I invite you to realize and accept that you are meant to live creatively. And in a little bit, I'm going to ask you to have a new thought about that. All right, our third attitude and our final attitude for this message, play big. And this is the attitude of happiness. In the Bhagavad Gita, we are told that the full nature of God is joy and that we are the enjoyers. But it's not always that easy. The 92-year-old, petite, well-poised, and proud lady who is fully dressed each morning by 8 o'clock with her hair fashionably done and makeup perfectly applied, even though she is legally blind, moved to a nursing home today. Her husband of 70 years recently passed away, making the move necessary. After many hours of waiting patiently in the lobby of the nursing home, she smiled sweetly when told her room was ready. As she maneuvered her way in, in, with her walker to the elevator, the aide provided a visual description of her tiny room including the eyelid sheets that had been hung on her window. 
Oh, I just love it, she stated with the enthusiasm of an eight-year-old girl having just presented, been presented with a new puppy. Mrs. Jones, you haven't seen the room. Just wait, the aide said. And Mrs. Jones said, she replied, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Happiness is something you decide on ahead of time. Whether I like my room or not doesn't depend on how the furniture is arranged. It is how I arrange my mind. And I've already decided to love it. I make decisions like that every morning when I wake up, she said. I have a choice. I can spend the day in bed recounting the difficulty with I have with the parts of my body that no longer work the way they should, or I can get out of bed and be thankful for the ones that do. Each day is a gift, and as long as my eyes open, I'll focus on the new day and all the happy memories I've stored away just for this time in my life. One of the most radical things we can do is to make a decision to be happy. Again, Dr. Holmes tells us in the Science of Mind textbook, he says, anything that will enable us to express greater life, greater happiness, greater power, so long as it does not harm anyone, must be the will of God for us. As much life as we can conceive will become part of our experience. If we want to live big, we must make the choice to live in happiness. Pam Grout again, page 153. You're the only one who can decide if your glass is half empty or half full. Enthusiastic, childlike joy is not something you need to grow out of. One of the greatest ways to serve your fellow man is to figure out a way to enjoy yourself and to let people know that enjoying yourself is a good thing. Vow today to approach your life with a sense of aliveness. Intentionally decide that you're only going to look for the good and concentrate on the beautiful. When you decide to practice the attitude of happiness, boredom turns into exploration. Canceled flights turn into a party. Waiting in line becomes a great opportunity to meet new people. Vacuuming the floor is a ballet performed to Van Morrison. <laughs> And of course, a rainy day calls for an indoor picnic with five kinds of cheese. Make this revolution, revolutionary attitude switch now. Your joie de vivre, which is French for joy of living, will be contagious. Maybe you'll even make the six o'clock news, end quote from Pam Grout. So today, we've talked about thinking big, boldness imagining big creativity and playing big happiness. Now I said earlier that today is the day and you on Facebook can do this too. Today is the day to have a big, bold, new thought about who you are. Not one of the 57,000 recycled thoughts, but a new one. And I meant right now, what is a big, bold, new thought you can have about yourself right now. Go ahead and have it. Have that new thought right now. Now, if anybody does want to jump out and share, or if you'd like to place it in the comment section online, doesn't matter if we're live or you're listening to the recording of this, make a commitment. Step out and make that big, bold claim about you. Put it in the comment section. It's sort of holding yourself accountable to it. But if anybody wants to jump out, feel free to jump out right now. Anyone? I see smiles out there, but I don't see. I, I, see, that's that corner of the room where we get to know and we're familiar with it and we don't want to cross that edge. And that's okay. I'm not going to put anybody on the spot. Oh, I see a, somebody unmuted. 
I did. <laughs> okay, so today. of course it's me. Oh my God. I think this this talk is is was written for me. Um, I just love happiness. So and my my big thought for me right now, today in this very moment, would be I am the biggest philanthropist in the world. I I just go out there, basically what I'm doing now, but just on a bigger scale of making everything happen for people so that they can live their lives that they really want to live. So I do it with ease and joy. It's, it's almost like if you can think about it being Oprah, giving away everything that she possibly want. And that's what I want to do. All right. Great share. Thank you. Look at the... Uh... The crowd goes wild in the background there. <laughs> I, I love that. Thank you for um, coming out and sharing for sure. Now, let's take a look at uh, wh what is something that is wanting to be created from you? What has been knocking at your door? What is a new thought you could have about it today? right now and i know there's people looking in that have already done all this and, but stay in that energy what is something that is wanting to be created from you if anybody wants to come out i'll just give you oh a, an opportunity to do that as well if anybody wants to share what is something that is wanting to be created from you here i'll tell you what i'll throw out the next one and if you want to comment on either one of these you can do that and finally what is the new thought you could have about your ability to play big or have an attitude of happiness? Not tomorrow, but right now. I invite you to talk to me about any of this. Anybody? Any comments out there? All right. Well, okay, me again. <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to say anything, but that's okay. So I, I'll take the third one first, which is to be created out of me. I would love to be able to design the clouds just as I go with my happiness day by day to allow the clouds to just be able to form in, in and from the energy that's coming from me, which is just to truly make everybody happy. So well, that's can see outside them. the box, outside the box thinking, and it is. I, I, I love it, you know, and, and it I'm, is outside I, I'm the doing box. that too, you know, before the pandemic, I'm looking back through a lot of files and transferring things and looking at memories that came up, and we were making some moves before the pandemic, and it's like, I'm going to pick that up, I don't know where along the way I lost that, probably about being self-conscious about Oh, I might appear to others, but I'm throwing all that out the window and I'm committed to being back on the world stage again, internationally. So, uh, so that's my, my big and bold vision. So let's get back to today's message again and just wrap it up. Just remembering God is more completely expressed through the one who lives big. Live big. That's it. And let's anchor all of this into prayer. Do Tanae, did you prepare something? Or you want me to just throw it out there to to, to wrap us up? I did not okay. prepare anything. Uh, Glory, Reverend Glory, would you like to come out and do a closing prayer for us? Are you on the spot? It's up to you. Um, yeah, no, I'd be happy to. Just one second. Let me see if I get my video working. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. So, mm. Yeah, so... Let's just take this moment, this sacred moment together as we move into a space of prayer, closing your eyes if you're comfortable doing so and if it's safe for you. And connecting into this field of infinite possibilities of this place of stillness where all the big ideas are being born here in this sacred time and space, we are one 
in the in the infinite. And we feel within our own hearts something stirring, an awakening and a realization of our greatest and limitless self, of who we are here to be, and that there is no limit, there is nothing that we are not capable of when we allow ourselves to be that divine potential, to be spirit in expression. We are so grateful for the message that we have received today in our minds and our hearts, and we know that we are transformed. And in this community, we support one another in being the best and the biggest version of ourselves. And in that space of love and gratitude, we say, amen, and so it is. All right, perfect. Thank you, Glory. Putting you on the spot, Reverend Glory, I should say, and putting you on the spot to wrap us up for today. Hey, I want to thank everybody for looking in. We should sure have our, our next fun date, uh, whether we're going to do stone soup or uh, a fun play date or or our luncheon, um, we're shoehorning it in because next next month I go to Par Parliament of World Religions. Um, so we should have an announcement real soon. So keep opening the email and looking at that. We hope to cement something this week. So I'm going to take us off. Don't go anywhere, Zoom folks. I'm going to take us off, off of social media. So I want to thank you all for looking in, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube or wherever you're seeing this within your ministry. Uh, thanks for sharing that those who share this and we'll see you uh, in the morning, morning inspiration, seven days a week and Sunday morning message here at 9 a.m. Central Time, week in and week out. Thanks for looking in.